Regarding student privacy, if you have questions. Sige. Ay, tungkol po sa student privacy ay meron po kasi nagtanong na kabataan na ito pong, minsan po kasi nagkaroon ng issue dito sa Northern American Division na dapat we were tame ang uh, babae. At si Mrs. White po ay babae. Kaya yun po po ay uh, ang sinasabi ay uh, si Mrs. White ay hindi ka dapat dapat dahil babae. Pero though nag-qualify po siya sa sa qualifications ng being a true prophet, ano po isasagot natin dahil, dahil po babae daw po siya? The question is for Pastor White. Uh, Ellen White was not ordained as a minister. Although she was ordained by God as a prophet, working as a minister actually, but she was not actually ordained by man's hand. Uh, so I don't know what is the direction of the question, but uh, as far as I I know, there was no uh, no time Ellen White was ordained as a minister by uh, the laying of hands. Okay. I, I thought that there were some as a follow-up. But you know, if you go to um, Ellen White Estate, you will see there are two certificates of Ellen White's ordination. There was Ellen White, there are three certificates. First, he was an ordained minister, but they put XXX on the word ordained. Second, she was given a, again another certificate with the word ordained, uh, but not with human hands, you know. Right? And then he was given another certificate as an ordained woman, but never ordained as a, as a minister with the laying of hands by human hands. But he was ordained by God as a prophet, also as a minister of the church, but not with human hands. Thank you, Pastor. So, we have a question here. I think this is for Kerona. Kerona, do you ask the question? Is it okay to pray even... Is it okay to pray even though you're lying? You're lying down in bed. So, is it okay to pray even... Even though you're lying? I'd like to know who that is that asked the question. Lazy you are. <laughs> when you study the Bible, you find out there are instances. And once I had to have a very long conversation with a sister who was firmly pressing that we have to kneel in our churches each time there is prayer. She said, "You rather no. It's not right. Whenever there is prayer, we have to kneel. We are disrespecting God when we're not kneeling." And I had to go through a lot of biblical material. We went from story after story, passage after passage to show. In the Bible, there was a time when everybody was standing and praying. There was a time everybody was sitting and praying. There was a time everybody was kneeling and praying. There was a time everybody was lying down and praying. Peter was drowning and he was praying. Jonah was in the fish's belly and he was praying. Try that. So some people find out what is the right, am I really doing this right or not? And as one score of the church says, what really matters is not the posture of your body, but the posture of your heart. Many times your knees are kneeling, but your heart is not kneeling. Many times you're right, and by the way, every posture has a meaning to it. In the Bible, people stood up and prayed in reverence to God. They would kneel in humility and submission because that was the practice each time you went in a king's court. In respect to the king, the subject would kneel and press his petition before the one thereby ascribing to him and letting him know that you are a higher authority than I am. People would lie down prostrate. You, you read the story of Jesus. While there were times when he would kneel and pray in the garden of Gethsemane, he fell on his face. He was lying prostrate. And there are times, sometimes you just don't feel worthy enough. You just don't feel, Lord, I want to talk to you. 
like, what do you feel worthy as if I'm respecting you enough by leaving? And many times we find ourselves prostrate. Many times I come into my room and I'm like, Lord, what you've done today, I just can't sit or stand and talk to you. I, I recognize myself as dust and there I lay prostrate before you and say, Lord, you are good and I am not. So friends, I, I simply say that the posture you need to know that also does not mean, okay, so that means I can just be doing whatever I want to just be praying. So it's, a, it's, it's many a times it is just you yourself in conversation with God, whether driving or sitting or standing or working. But again, your heart has to be connected in the right place. Your heart has to be in the right posture with God. And as you come to Him, you will find spiritual strength. I say this just before I sit, just pray, just pray, because many people have heard about the posture, I'm just, I'm just glad when I hear people are actually praying, and I think that's what really matters in the, in the times that we live in, that you find the way you know God is respected the most, you talk to God, and when you spend more time with God, you yourself find out what do I need to be? Where should I be? In what posture should I be? And God will be glorified and not myself. So that's what I'm saying. Thank you so much, dear Adam. So we have and then Mr. Tanurito. This is for his friendship. Kailan? 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 at anong gagawin? Kailan mo malaman na maling na magulang at anong gagawin? <laughs> okay, good evening. Iba sa pito sa text na binasa natin kanina. Hindi yung, uh, hindi yung unang text na pinabasa ko sa inyo na Parents, obey your children in the Lord for this is right. Kasi wrong yun. Yung tunay na nasa version ng Bible is Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Di ba? Meron dun ng word na in the Lord. So, kailan natin malalaman na tama ang ating parents? It's obvious. If it is according to God's will. Kung ano yung will of God, tapos naka-align din yung will ng, ng parents mo, therefore, He is right. And if it's the other way around, Mali na siya. And, isa yung, isa dun sa akin hinighlight kanina, na hindi na nga mahulugan na mali ang ating magulang, hindi na natin respetuhin. It is the position of parenthood that we respect and not the personality. Oftentimes, our parents are in the wrong position. Kung ano man yung mga issues na pinag-uusapan ninyo. But, you have no right to disrespect them. Because they are your parents. Yeah. Good evening. I wanted to answer that question. I just wanted to add something with another question. How do you know they are wrong? How do you know your parents are wrong? Or an elderly person who might be telling you that this person is not the right person. Because we would want that they are wrong. You, you get what I'm saying? And so we want them to be wrong. So when they tell us this is not the person, you're asking, how do we know if they are right or wrong? Because you want them to be wrong because you want to stay with that person. And so you will know depending on your connection with God, with Christ. Um, you remember Abraham, right? He was about to die and Isaac needed someone. You know what he did, right? He asked his servant to go look for someone. You know what Abraham said? He said, the angel of the Lord will go with you, will go before you. And so as you search, and if you want to know, uh, ask God, and God will, will show you. That's what I wanted to know. Can I ask? So, may have a question? Reverse. You still have a question? Please come, please come forward. Uh, my question is, is there a possibility that the Bible could be an idol itself? Could 
could be an idol itself? Is there a possibility that the Bible could be an idol itself? Anyone? Anyone could ask you that book? Can you have idol you own Bible? when there are mis uh, say mesmerism or um, demoniacs. You know, we're using the Bible, we're putting it like that, as if the, the devil is going to be, is going to be, is going to fear of the material of the Bible. I think that doesn't make sense. That's idolatry or we are thinking as if like the, the Ark of the Covenant has the power rather than God. It's not the Ark that has the power. Remember the time when the glory of God left Israel, Ichabod, and they were thinking that it was it was the 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 Ark of the Covenant that would make them win. So they bring it in front of the army, and lo and behold, the Philistine what took it, was it Philistine? took it to prove that the that it was not the power of the material, the material that made them win. It was the presence of God. So when the presence of God left, they were also, the Israel also realized that they were against God and they were using the Ark of the Covenant instead of being used by God to win against the, you know, the enemy. So if it's only the material that uh, we like, we adore or we worship or we are shielding ourselves, then that's, a, that's, I think, idolatry, a form of idolatry. But if it's the content of the Word of God, it's powerful and it's not idolatry. It's just plain worship of of the the, the, the God of the Word of God. Okay? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, I just like to add to what was already said, and I have to say this: uh, your Bible can become your idol when. Your Bible stops becoming the Word of God to you and it becomes a textbook to you. There are many who know everything in the Bible. They'll quote you this, they'll tell you stuff. And it's amazing, Pastor, saying the content is so powerful, it has to change you. Because if you let it in, you're going to begin to worship God the way He actually wants to be worshipped. But when the knowledge of God, when what you know about God, begins to create that pride in you that I know so much, that knowledge itself will become your idol. So in those cases, the Bible you all know, and now the stuff that nobody is able to explain, you are explaining, but what you are able to explain now, itself has become the idol. So what's scary there is while you are still talking about God, you are boasting and priding about the knowledge you have about God. Uh, thereby negating the very fact that the knowledge you do have was given by God in the first place. So friends, never forget that the Bible is about God and God alone. It's not about how much of it I can pack up in my brain. And in one conversation, one, one, one teacher shares, he says, the devil has told his angels, let them memorize the whole Bible, but let them only memorize it to go quote it to somebody else. To go show off to somebody else how much Bible they have in their head. So friends, understand this, that you can actually many times use the word of God and try to use it to portray and depict and to say anything you want to make it to say. And so the, the worry there is we always have to be on our knees. Which is why Sister White Sister right, Sister right says in the book Steps to Christ, never ever open the Bible without praying. You have to plead with the Lord. You have to beg the author of the book to help you understand the book. And you have to ask the Lord, Lord, I'm about to read your word. You lead me. 
please don't let this only be theoretical to me. The Bible is not so that I know the story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The Bible is there so that I should know how can I use their story and relive that story. How can I learn from there and bring it into my life? And where I fail to draw that application and only seek to just know everything, to let somebody else know that very knowledge of, of, of itself can be prideful and become my idol in many ways. I just want to add and uh, quote the Bible with it. I know in 2 Timothy chapter 3 it says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Why? Because men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, etc. Now notice this in verse 5, saying, Having the form of godliness. And how do you form a godliness? By using your Bible, you know. Having the form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. In verse 7 it says, always learning. I mean, cognitively. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. The Bible becomes idolatry just as the Pharisees and the scribe would use it. Its forms are there, but its essence are it's the vestige of the essence of the power of the Bible. This is the power of the truth is not there. Now let me read you what kind of idolatry will they make out of this Bible. Matthew chapter 23 verse 15 says, Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. What is hypocrites? This is the Greek word for actors. So that they knew the script. But they just knew the script. But they don't live the script. And then it says, Woe to you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. Meaning to convert him to become Bible idolaters as well. Proselyte. And when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of a hell as yourselves. So you can use the Bible to make other people and convert people from one place to be called. And make him twice as much a son of a hell as you are by being hypocrites. Thank you, Pastor. So for our next question, this is for Pastor Brian. When you get called in faith, what is the best thing to do? Specific, parang practical, practical things to do. What when, when when you get called in faith, what is the best thing to do? Ah, malamig. Okay. Akala ko tinawaga sa panahin ko. Of course, the Bible says, you should ne neither be hot nor cold. Uh, you should be either hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Now, it's better that you are cold. Why? Because if you know that you are cold, you need it to be hot. You need to know if you are cold. If you are cold, you need to know that you are cold so that you can do something. Now, what is cold? Now, just let me uh, use some scientific. Cold is what? Static energy. Well, hot means flowing or moving. So you need to be moving. So how do you move yourself? Let me open it from the scripture. In uh, Psalm chapter 190, verse 15 says, this is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. What about other translation? You know this is what I like. <laughs> quickens. Quickens. Your word quickens means give you life, make you move. And then, of course, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says that the all the Bible is inspired. The word inspired means has the power to move. For correction, for reproof, for instruction. Meaning, to make you move, to motivate you to do something. Now, how, how, what do you do with your faith? The problem with faith is when you're static. Faith should not end in, in faith. According to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5.
I hope you read it. If you're not a pastor, let me know one verse five. It says, "But also, what is this? Second Peter chapter one verse five. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Don't stop with just faith." Faith is opening your mind to God's possibilities of understanding His will. That is faith. Okay? But add to your faith virtue, the character, and add to your virtue knowledge. So faith seeks to understand. Not, oh, I, I believe it, I believe it. Even if you don't understand, no. If you have faith, you have to add it with virtue and with virtue knowledge. Because scientists would ask you questions, how would you how would you answer? At least you should answer it by knowledge. So add to your virtue knowledge and add to your knowledge self-control. If you have knowledge without self-control, you, you're going to grow. When you stop to grow, you start to die. Self-control, perseverance, and, self -pers and perseverance, godliness. But don't end there. Add to your godliness, brotherly kindness, and to your brotherly kindness, love. Love is the very essence of why we need faith. Faith is just the beginning, but we should not end with faith. So what to do? Add. And how do you add it? It's the scriptures that gives you all of this virtue, all of this knowledge, all of this wisdom. And there are three revelations of God's uh, of, of God's love, of God's wisdom. Nature, the special revelation, which is Jesus Christ in the scripture. And... Uh, yeah, the, the general revelation, the special revelation, and the scripture. So what are the general revelation? History, nature, and human experience. So don't, it's not only the scripture. You should also observe. Look at the ants. Look at this. Look at that. Add to it your experiences so that your faith would grow. Just like this. Experiencing this. Like, that, like this. And then practice it. Whenever you read the Bible, try to practice it. Experiment about it. Okay? And then grow until you reach love. Love does not cease. Okay, love is the very essence of why we need faith. Yeah, 1017. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing the word that comes from God. And what is faith? Faith is what the evidence, the substance of things. Not seeing the evidence of the things we hope for. But just don't end with faith. There are still more to add on it. We call it the lateral, the petrol ladder. It must be, you know, growing up, growing up. Okay? The ladder of Peter. Anyone can answer, Bob? May kay bigat po kasi kaming katoliko na interested sa religion natin. Nagsabi po siya na mag-share kami tungkol sa religion natin. So, ano po bang magandang unang i-share sa kanya para mas madali po niyang maintindihan? So, we can ask. I think the first thing is the love of God. I remember once I was going to school for a week of prayer and I met a teacher in the airport. I think they had a teacher's conference in Cebu. And he asked me, where are you going? I told him, I'm going to Cebu. What are you going to do there? I told him, evangelism. And he didn't understand, so I told him, worship. And he, he understood. And then he asked me, uh, what church? What do you mean this? I told him, I'm SDA. And you know what he told me immediately? He said, oh, you don't need poor. You go to church on the Sabbath. Um, I said, wow, he knows all of that. And he left. And then after a while, I began to think, and I said, that's what people know about. We teach the Sabbath without teaching about Christ. We are leading people to the Sabbath and we are not leading them to Christ. So I would say, surely begin with the love of God, begin with Jesus, and even before you do that, your lifestyle, the way you live, you can lead people to Christ without opening your mouth. So focus on the love of God and don't just do it because you want to lead that person to your church. But take that as an opportunity for you to grow with Christ. That is the objective, your relationship with Christ, and out of your relationship with Christ, others will be blessed. So focus on that. Thank you, Maya. So we have here a question. Hey, I'm going to ask you a question. Hindi po 
Jehovah, alam natin ang Diyos ay mapagpatawad. Then, posible po bang si Satan ay magsisi sa kabila ng kanyang mga kasalanan na humingi ng kapatawaran sa Diyos at siya ay papatawarin? Posible po bang si Satan ay maging isang servant ni God? <laughs> let me just tell the question and then let me answer and if you have answered he said is it possible for Satan to repent and be forgiven and become the servant of God you know there's there are two things the possibility and uh, possibility probability and probability the possibility and probability thank you sir now according to the great controversy if you read who have read the great controversy through and through until the last chapter the end end of controversy if you would read the end of controversy satan was given a chance to repent and he recognized god as just and he bowed down just as Revelation chapter 4 and 5 would say, He bowed down and all the creatures bowed down with Him. So, it, actually all the great controversy, all the plan of redemption seeks to save Satan and all his angels. That was the object of, of God's revelation of His love. Seeks to, to, to save Satan and his angels. So Satan bowed down and recognized he was forced by his own mouth. He was, but his character was fixed. Pride, covetousness, and all of this has already, you know, stick within him. So that after bowing down, he suddenly realized the future. In the future time of eternity, he would be recognizing God as supreme. And all throughout the history, Everybody knows that it was him who had caused so much trouble all, all throughout the 6,000 years. And just thinking about this and the consequences of this, even though he recognizes that God is supreme and God is just and loving, he could not think about himself bowing down because of pride, because of covetousness and envy. That was already established for many, many years. That's why our our... Our enemy is our character, not God. In the last day, it's not God that is our enemy. Our character becomes our enemy because if pride is established, it is not easily broken down. So when Satan finally withdrew his submission to God, all began to what? Began to revive their pride. And, and they suddenly just submit to God for God to have destroyed them because they could not imagine that they would worship God in eternity. So it was a free submission and even uh, it was not arbitrary. It, it was their will to be killed and to be burned. So nobody forced them to be burned. It was their will because they could not imagine this. So there's a chance. God is always giving a chance. But their choice are fixed because their characters had already been fixed. So God is always, you know, wanting everyone to be saved. All throughout eternity, He wanted everyone. And He even promised that if Satan would what? Would submit to Him, He would again go back to the same position as He was once before. So that was God's promise. But it's the choice. It's free will and God's sovereignty that, you know, goes against. Just to add what Master has said, um, no, he cannot, but that's because he chose. He, has, he was the one who chose not to repent. He was the one who chose not to be forgiven. That's what Pastor said, because of his pride. And if you look at these other pages, um, it says that he, God sent angels, not only to Lucifer, but to the one third of angels that were about to fall, that if they would repent, they could come back. But she says that the devil said uh, to the other angels, the other angels had believed and they wanted to go back. But he told them, I am not acquainted with God's law. And 
God will not forgive you. And also because of his pride, he said uh, he could not imagine himself having to bow down before God, before the angels, and apologize. And so he did not go. But that doesn't mean you cannot be forgiven. That doesn't mean you cannot be forgiven. Uh, he will not come back because he has chosen. Right? But you can be forgiven. You still have time. And if you confess your sins, God will forgive you. Thank you so much. So, I'm going to time. So maybe, there are still a lot of questions. Maybe you could ask them if it's possible. You can, um, you can ask them personally if you wanted to ask questions. If there is time. So now we would be focusing on the Sahagarana for promotion. Thank you so much. Resources that are out there that are online that you all can have direct access to. They are free, they are available. If you can get yourself in connection with the internet, there are a lot of things that can help you grow in the study of the Word. There are many materials you can go through. So I ask you right now to take out your papers and your pens, you have your notebooks, you can start taking down notes. I'm going to give you a list of resources that are freely accessible, you can use them anytime you like, they're online, and you can use them for your own benefit. So, let's go. I'm going to give you one of the things I enjoy using the most. It is a website called BibleTools.info. So that's one word, if you can type that for everyone to see. It is BibleTools, B-I-B-L-E-T-O-O-L-S. BibleTools.info When you go to that website, immediately it will open up a search bar on the top. In that search bar, whatever passage you are having difficulty studying, whatever Bible verse you cannot fully understand or struggling to get it, you just type that verse, for instance, John 3.16. You type John 3.16 in the search bar. As you press enter, below you will open up, and this is one of the only resources online where you can access this directly. It will open up for you what is known as the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary. So when it opens up, it will explain what that verse means, and you can go through it. As it opens that up, along with it, it will open up every Everwhite writing in connection with that Bible text that you're looking for. It's also a great way to be able to do your Bible studies or a great way to be able to prepare your messages or whatever. So, Supasama, can we have that first one up? Okay, that's BibleTools.info. You can take that down. Next one is Audioverse. Audioverse, is that org? Dot org? Is that what it is? Audioverse.org. So, that's the next one. Audioverse is amazing. You're going to have a, a lot of fun time if you can get access to Audioverse. Audioverse has a collection of sermons and presentations, video and audio, from a lot of speakers, particularly at GYC, and you might hear more of GYC in the coming times. So you have all these great speakers. You have Pastor Doug Batchelor, Pastor Mark Finley, and uh, now the much known preachers like Pastor Brain Lemon, and you have Pastor Jeremiah Davis and many others. You have a lot of these presentations 
on Audioverse. You, all you have to do is you go to Audioverse, again in the search bar, you just type whatever topic you want to know more about. So if it's faith, somebody was talking about faith, you type in that search bar faith or growing in faith, type something like that. And it'll bring out a whole huge list of sermons. Trust me, you might not even have enough time to be able to go through all the material because there's just so much there. So you can download these sermons. They come in MP3, they have videos, and you can download all of them and be able to access them freely whenever you, you feel like. So that's Audioverse. I also want to give to you, those of you who want to, who are reaching out to friends who are not of the same faith, like somebody talked about reaching out to a Catholic friend or whoever, an excellent resource is Amazing Facts. Have you heard of it? Bachelor Bachelor is the president, amazingfacts.org. Uh, amazing facts. I really want you to tap this resource. It's very, very powerful. Amazingfacts.org. Go to their website. They have a section called Bible Study Guides. And I tell you, I've personally gone through those Bible Study Guides. They are going to be a huge source of help to you in your own personal study, particularly on the fundamental beliefs of the church. It will take you through different doctrines in the Bible. And it's a beautiful way. All you, all it is, is it's a question and answer. It's a question and answer. So you can be sharing this. Just read the question, ask that question to your friend, and you give an answer solely based on the Bible. So I put this out to you, especially when you're talking to friends who are not of the Advent faith. You have a hard time getting primarily across the idea of Sister White as a prophet. So you don't start, okay, the answer to this question is going to great controversy, you cannot do that. So you have to be able to explain all that you believe in, uh, in as, as a faith establishment, particularly and solely from the scriptures. Amazing Facts is a great resource, the Bible study guides give you a question and answer, and each answer is supported with a Bible verse. So these are just a few resources that we have out there that you could use. So Bible tools, if you want to take a look at a, at a deeper understanding of a passage, you have audioverse.org, you have amazing facts. And for those of you who really want to look at some deep-ended stuff, you can go to Google, I'm not sure what the current website is called, but it's uh, Biblical Research Institute, if you can just type that. So Biblical Research Institute is, a, is an institute set up by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it's a group of scholars in the church who sit down and write papers and articles and presentations on, on, on different issues and different texts in the Bible that are not so clearly understood. So those of you out there who really like some deep edited studies, you can go and, and take a look at um, that particular website, Adventist, uh, or I think, is that what it's called now? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the new name. So if you can just take note of, of, of all of those resources and there might be more things, and I think up until the time that we have to tomorrow, we might promote a few things. And so you are free to try that. If you have questions about any of these resources, you can approach us anytime. And we'd like to be of the best help to you. So God bless you all as you study more and get ready for the coming of Jesus.